spoken about a lot of franchises this year, so I think we should keep the ball rolling with another one. Um, probably for a reason that not many people are going to be fans of me about, but I'm okay with that simply be simply because I'm going to stick to my guns when it comes to a lot of things. You know, being that I'm a uh, I consider myself a cinephile and a huge movie buff, I take you know, my opinion with a grain of salt when it comes to other people's opinions. But I also have the films that I enjoy and the films that I stand by. So when we're talking about uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street and the franchise that that has become and all uh, eight films that that is revolving around, it is really tough to sit here and say that I am a huge advocate for the 2010 reboot. We'll get to that in a second. We're just going to let you sit there and fester with that for a minute. So let's just talk about the franchise as a whole and how that kind of just... It took the world by storm to such an extent that, like, a lot of people forget that the very first Nightmare on Elm Street actually put a lot of people... I don't want to say, like, on the map, but it definitely was substantial for a lot of people's careers, I feel like. I feel like anybody who is, like, a big deal now wasn't a big deal back then and that's why like they kind of had these movies to kind of be their first like up and coming films in a way um so for example the 1984 nightmare on elm street has johnny depp in it he doesn't acknowledge it he's never part of anything that has to do with it but he plays a very major role in that film you know what i'm saying so it's hard that he's not then you got actors like john saxon who you know very well known for films before and after this so i'm not going to say that that was really like huge for him but then you have uh heather uh langenkamp i'm definitely sorry if i had to say that so i had to make sure i pronounced it the right way but heather langenkamp she's um huge hugely known for that film just as much as robert england is like robert england is one of the few actors and i've said this in entries before he's one of the few actors to play the role of the same horror character the most amount of times i believe it's like they have it at a minimum of like six because i think that's the minimum and he's at playing freddy eight times eight times he's played freddy krueger all the way from 1984 to 2003's freddy versus jason now wherever you put the freddy versus jason film whether you consider that a friday the 13th film or if you consider that um, a Nightmare on Elm Street film, that I'm going to leave up to you. I always kind of go back and forth, but it's it's in there. It's part of both of their histories in a way. So the first film releases in 84, and it becomes this huge sensational hit. It grosses crazy amounts of money. Like when I'm talking, I, I think it like costs like, I, I know I'm not going to say the right number, but it, let's say it costs 10 grand. And then it made like a million dollars. Like that's how big of a gap this is. Like if, if it made a million, it made like 50 million. Like that's that's how crazy the number was and how huge that film became to the point where they were just like, okay, we need more. And of course, when you got somebody like Wes Craven backing it up, like Wes Craven, this was his era where he was making movie after movie and hit after hit. He directed and wrote this film the first one, and those are the only ones that he has, all the credit goes straight to him. I believe he has some, like, um, some story credit for, um, Dream Warriors as well, which, if anybody is a big Freddy fan, like I am, Dream Warriors is the best one. Dream Warriors is everybody's favorite one. If Dream Warriors is not your favorite Freddy movie, you're wrong. Just know that, know that right off the bat, you're wrong. Um, Freddy's Revenge had a lot, which is the second one, Dream Warriors is the third one. Freddy Revenge, the second one, had a lot of different connotations um, attached to it. There was a lot of uh, weird stuff that was going on with that one. Um, However, I think it was also still very successful, very lucrative. Um, So they kept doing them. You know, they kept doing more and more of them. And that's where it became this huge franchise where Freddy was like the talk of the town. And each one superseded itself. I don't remember Dream Master all that well, which is the fourth installment, and I believe that's the one that's meant to be a true sort of backstory for Freddy. Like it's meant to go really deep on the um, like his birth 
and who he's where he derives from and how he was like the 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 son of like a bastard he was the bastard son of a nun and something like that i believe that's what that really focuses on then there's five which is dream child which is probably the least successful of all of them uh i i don't know that one very well off the top of my head i'm usually good with my freddy films i can't remember what dream child is about but then we go into things like final nightmare and freddy's dead and freddy Fre 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 uh, freddy's dead the final nightmare is just the best for me because like that is just a tremendous thing that they did with that film i love freddy's dead i love what the concept of that film was uh, I love the fact that it kind of did what the first film was trying to do, but make it more in tone with, like, the 90s when it came out. Which you gotta understand, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, is the sixth film within, from 1984 to, I think, 91. Freddy's Dead, 91. Yeah, Freddy's Dead comes out in 91. So, six films within seven years that's a big deal like they were pushing out freddy movies like it was no joke and then you don't get anything for three more years until wes craven's new nightmare comes out and wes craven's new nightmare is a very interesting take on the entire idea of what freddy krueger and the franchise as a whole was really meant to be doing now again we have Wes craven behind the scenes again he's got the director's seat he's got the writer's seat so he's got full control over this. And it's supposed to be, I think, this this kind of cross between, like, fourth wall breaking, but then not so fourth wall breaking. And they redesigned Freddy. And I'm guessing it was, like, this redesign of trying to recreate Freddy Krueger, almost, but didn't do all that well to recreate him because it wasn't, like, as good. And then that's the last thing we get until freddy versus jason so after 94 there was nothing else when it came to anything else freddy now again everyone has their favorite freddy movie all the movies are can sometimes be considered hit and misses for a lot of different a lot of people um what i'm gonna say is the same year though before i get into the remake the same year though they had a documentary come out which is called <clears throat> never sleep again this is a four hour documentary going really really deep into the the making of freddy krueger the making of each individual film and all of the backstories behind what really got these films pushed and why they were pushing them out so much and what it was about the films that drove people to like like care about this character and what drove people to love this character so much like we're talking like the boogeyman reincarnated and this and this documentary really goes deep on it and if none if nobody has ever heard of it or seen it it is totally worth the four hour sit through if you're a freddy krueger fan and if you are a diehard freddy krueger fan you've definitely seen it by now but even if you just like documentaries and you're interested definitely give that a shot never sleep again is tremendous it's a huge documentary i love that documentary so now now let's get into the the reboot of a nightmare on elm street from 2010 i understand that when i say that i'm probably one of the few people who actually do appreciate this film i can get that i'm standing in a room by myself a lot of the time which is perfectly understandable you know i do understand that when you watch that film it is not the best it is not a true reboot it is not the best reboot it is not a retelling any way whatsoever of what might have fully connected it it is just a more modernized version that i had an open mind about and because of that open mind open-mindedness for it i found a joy in it i found myself thoroughly enjoying it simply for the fact that i didn't expect much out of it because this is also leading off of Every other reboot they were doing, we're talking, they, this was, within five years, they had done an Amityville Horror, they had done Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they had done 
uh, another Halloween, the Rob Zombie Halloweens. They had done the Friday the 13th reboot in 2009. Like, they were just doing reboot after reboot, and they were all hits or misses. So it's kind of like you had to fall in line with which ones you were willing to kind of say you liked or say you appreciated. You almost had to find the appreciation. You had to find the joy in something. I could say that the only reason I really like the Friday the 13th reboot from 2009 is because Jason is played by Derek Mears. And I love Derek Mears. He plays Swamp Thing. He, Derek Mears does so many good roles that that's probably one of the few reasons. I mean, that, along with Jared Padalecki being in it as well, you really appreciate the film for being this kind of shining light on those people as actors, I guess you could say. With this, it's sort of the same for me because I'm a big fan of Jackie Early Haley. Jackie Early Haley, to me, is a great actor. I've loved almost anything he's done, which is why this film also has a soft spot for me because if he's in it, I have to... I, I'm not saying that I have to like it, but it's hard for me not to like it. You know what I mean? And I've liked him since The Watchmen, which was the year prior to this. So I loved him in The Watchmen. Um, I also loved him in Shutter Island. I loved him in the, the RoboCop remake, even though I don't necessarily like the RoboCop remake. I do like him in the RoboCop remake. You know, he was also in um, Alita Battle Angel that I, I am um, a big fan of. And he was in... There's another film that I know with him that um, it's one of the it's one of the the um, what's this guy's name? It's one of those films about has fallen. I don't believe it's Olympus has fallen. I believe it's like the second or third one in that series. I can't remember which one it is, but he's in one of the has fallen series along with the actor that I can't remember his name now. And it's starting to bother me. The guy from Gerard Bartlett. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brain, for coming up with that name while I didn't fucking just put dead air on my podcast. So, Jack, as I digress, going back to A Nightmare on Elm Street and the reboot, Jackie Early Haley is one of the few reasons I do find appreciation in this film. There are some good moments in the film. You know, the film as a whole isn't the greatest, but there are good enough moments that, you know, you find, again, the appreciation in it. You find the ability to... To, to get your enjoyment out of it, at least for me. And I know I'm still one of the few people in the world that probably do find the enjoyment out of that, out of this film. But, like I said before, when it came to this string of about five or six years of just nothing but reboots of classic horror films, whether or not we wanted them, people fell in line and it was kind of an even playing field. I know people that are diehard Friday the 13th reboot fans, but... Then again, I also know people that fucking hate the Friday the 13th reboot just as much as they hate the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot. I'm not going to say that I've ever run into anybody who is an advocate for the 2010 reboot of the Nightmare on Elm Street, but I'm probably, you know, uh, a great white buffalo who just finds the enjoyment in whatever I can, I can scratch out of films. And this is up there as something I was able to scratch enough out of to say that it, it, it's something I, I enjoy enough to not bash on like everybody else does and all the other stuff that people really give it crap for. I think it was worth it in in a way, you know, out, out of everything, especially when it comes to, I did an entry a couple, I did a couple of entries ago, the, the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre one. When it comes to whatever they're doing, the whatever the fuck they're doing with that franchise, if I had to hold this up to that, this is still way better than that to me. And maybe I'm the only person that'll say that, but when it comes to this franchise, I'm a huge fan. So it's hard for me to dislike any part of it, even though I may not watch them all the time or know all of them right off the top of my head. You know, I definitely would say that I know the 2010 reboot better than I know Dream Child, which is probably sacrilegious if you're talking about people who love these franchises like diehard fans that they are but again i'm a person who has a very much broader interest outside of this and i find the enjoyment where i can find the enjoyment and this is definitely something that i enjoyed watching and i, I don't hate it like the rest of the world does